All right, today I'm gonna to tie one of my favorite large dry flies. It's a pattern I picked up in the Rangeley area in Maine. And, you know, it's not exactly, you know, how it looked in the fly shop, but it is pretty much, it is pretty similar. I've made some adjustments to it, but over the years as I've used it more and more, it's really become probably one of my favorite large dry flies. I, I prefer it in a lot of different situations, especially because it kind of floats like a cork too with all the foam. So I'm going to start out with some UTC 70 and Rusty Brown. And I'm going to get that going the same way that I do with my stimulators. I'm going to measure out how large of a head I want on that fly. And then I'm going to move the thread back from there. That's kind of a, a way that I measure it. Get that out of there. For anything that has a deer hair tail... I always lay down a thread base to keep that from spinning on me. So I'll go lay that down, head back up. And in my stacker, I've got some, some bleach stimulator deer hair. Really, really light color. Get that all evened up. And I want this tail to be kind of stimulator length, meaning not really, really long, just kind of peeling over the edge a little bit. So I'm going to measure that out. Lay that flat, get a couple of tight wraps just to get it cinched. And then I'm going to work my way back. Now the way I tie these is I'm going to grip those tips really, really tight to keep that hair gathered as I make my way all the way down the back. That'll keep it from splaying out, going all over the place and Keep it nice and tight with that look that I want to get. And then I'll go back up and cinch all that down. Okay. All right, we'll gather all this up, see if we can get it all in one quick snip. And I like to have it to where the edge is right where I stopped my thread. That way I can go and tie it all down and everything is still exactly where I want it. A little bit of under fur still on there, but we're in good shape. All right, I'm going to bring the thread back and stop it right there with a little bit of room left. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some of this purple peacock. I'm going to take some of the smaller strands of the hurl from the bottom of the eyes. I don't want to lose any of the material, so I'm going to use scissors instead of just ripping it off. So I'm going to get those tips tied in right about there. These don't have to be super neat. Basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little bit of a peacock butt on it. And usually when I tie with peacock, I, I reinforce it in a number of different ways. But for this, I just give it a little spin just to strengthen it a little bit. And it's only a couple of wraps. So it really doesn't. It really doesn't matter too much. I mean, I, I fish this pattern all the time. I've never had the peacock give me any kind of problem. Just adds a little bit on the butt. There. I'll get that all cinched in. And we're good. All right. Go down there, try to keep that body a little uniform. So I'll take one more pass up and then back down. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop my thread right at the edge of the peacock. Okay. Okay, next I'm going to tie in a strip of two millimeter tan foam. And what I did is I took a straight edge and a razor blade and just cut myself a strip of this. And I'm going to lay that right on top and then I'm going to Pinch it down evenly on both sides to try to get it to where it's going to lay just how I want it. Ah, there we go. We're going to take quite a few passes. This thread is not thin enough to slice the foam. But if you are using a thinner thread, you got to be careful because if you really put a lot of pressure on that first wrap, you could slice right through the foam. So I'm going to make a cut just inside the tip of the tails. I want that shorter than the tail. And then I'm just going to kind of square this off a little bit on the edges there in an ultimate display of something fish do not care about. 
but I like the look of the fly a little bit better. If it's not perfectly squared off, I like to kind of cut into it a little bit. Okay, next what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut myself about an 8-inch piece of this bright yellow unifloss. And that's going to be my body. I, I use unifloss on a lot of my stimulators. I have tons of this stuff in almost every color they offer. Always really liked it. So I'm going to get a couple of wraps on there, and then I'm going to pull it to even that up, and then cinch it down all the way down the body. For this step, you can use the rotary feature on your vise if you want, but honestly, it's, it's really not that many turns. I just turn it by hand. So I'm going to go, I'm going to cover up the brown that tied in the foam, and then I'm going to bring it back in front, and I'm going to go right down the body, giving it a yellow body. Now, again, I don't, I don't claim this to be a stone fly. I don't really claim it to be anything. Honestly, I don't know what the hell it looks like. But fish love it, and I've caught tons of fish, large fish on this pattern. And the reason why I'm mentioning that is because I'm giving this a yellow body, but what I've also done is I've also tied it in rusty brown, I've tied it in tan, I've tied it in a bunch of different colors to imitate all kinds of different things. Um, as I mentioned before, I picked this fly up in a shop in Rangeley, Maine. So Maine gets a hell of an alder fly hatch, and... I have tied this and fished it during the alder flies and have done very well with that as well. Zebra caddis, whatever you want to call them. I'm not really sure if they're the same thing or not, but I've heard them called both. I know there they call them alders. So now I'm just going to go and cinch this down in short little spurts, try to keep it all straight. And I'm going to run my thread all the way to the eye. Sorry, allergies are getting to me. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is the flash in the wing is going to go next. But see how you got that big gap right in there? What I want to do is I want to fill that in a little bit so that my wing will lay a little bit more flat. With that gap, if I cinch the thread down right there, that wing is going to go up like that. I don't really want that to happen. I want my wing to lay a little bit more flat. So I want to fill in that little trench right there a little bit. So I'm going to take my foam and on the very tip, I'm just going to snip off a little chunk and I'm going to, whoops, dropped it. And what I'm going to do, it's hard with these fat fingers, but I'm going to sit that right on top there, run my thread over the top of it and hold it there as I cinch down. And I'm basically just going to use this extra piece of foam to help close that in a little bit and give it a little bit of bulk for the wing to sit on. And it'll fill that in nicely. Just get all that cinched down. It doesn't really matter how sloppy this step is. It doesn't really matter. Okay, so there you go. You filled that in a little bit. Next step, I'm going to take some of this midge flash. It's basically crystal flash, just midge size. And I'm going to take two strands of it. If I could single out two strands, this stuff is pretty small. I like the smaller flash instead of the bigger flash, though. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take... I'm going to take it and just tie it in normal a couple passes towards the back back towards the front then i'm going to double it over so that it's all facing back okay all right so in my other stacker here i've got a little bit more of the same deer hair I'm gonna lower this a little bit get a little bit of a better view I've also done a lot of different variations of this fly, too. I've added hackle on the body. I've done a lot of different things. I haven't really seen that anything increases its, its effectiveness more than anything else. 
So I just tie it the way that I like to tie it and stick with that, which is the way I'm doing it here. So there's the wing. I'm going to measure that out. I want that right about there. So I'm going to bring that flat down, get it as close as I can, get a nice strong wrap on there. And I'm going to wrap towards the front specifically not towards the back. And then I'm gonna return my thread where it was. I'm gonna keep hanging on to that. And I'm gonna slip my scissors in here and just start snipping all this off. Scissors are getting a little dull. And there's a reason why I go specifically towards the front with my thread. So I'll show you why in a minute if I can just Get this all cleaned up here. Okay, so that's what that should look like. Make sure that that, if I spin that, yeah, I got a little bit on this side I might want to get rid of. If I can slip my scissor points in there. Good. All right. Hold that steady, go in, put some a series of good sharp wraps down on there. And I'm going to try something different on this fly. Just so you know, I have no idea what this is going to look like. I'm just doing it on the fly. What I'm going to do as I'm tying in the legs is I'm just going to kind of explain how I would normally finish the fly. But... I'm going to try one new little thing here. I want a little bit more of a buggy thorax. And I'm going to try to accomplish that in a certain way. But in the meantime, I've got one strand of these black round silly legs. And I'm going to tie those in right on top here. I tie my legs in a certain way. I cinch them down on top. And I get a couple of real firm wraps, about four. You don't want to do too many because then you can't move the legs. And then I'm going to take the loop, cut that, and then I'm going to take my legs and pull them down where I want them. And then that way they'll stick right there on the side exactly where I want. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold them there so I can get a couple of wraps in like this. Tighten them up. Straighten them one more time. Okay, we're looking pretty good here. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to dub my thread. And what I'm going to use is, let me get my dubbing back here. I'm going to use this awesome possum golden stone dubbing. And I'm going to start out with pretty thin noodle. I don't want to go too crazy with this because I'm going to do something else with it in a minute. Now, if I wasn't trying what I just mentioned I was going to try, then I would dub this and, and the whole head would be all dubbing. And I'd be essentially almost done with the fly. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use this dubbing to tame the wing and the legs down. Like that. And then bring my thread back to the front. Now what I want to do is I want to create a small dubbing loop here. Nothing crazy. I want to make sure I get that thread back on top of it so it doesn't come undone. Okay, I'm going to lock my bobbin away. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my dubbing loop and I am going to dub up one side of the loop. I got these legs in the way. Uh, that's going to be a little bit of a pain, but hopefully I can get that in there. Just dubbing up one side. Okay. All right. Now what I'm going to do... If I can get that to hang there for a minute, let me just rest that in there. Okay, I'm going to take these 
guard hairs from a hair's mask. I've just got them in my finger because I don't really need a lot of them. And I'm just going to slide that up into the dubbing loop until they catch. Just going to adjust the, I guess, the size a little bit. Pinch that. I'm going to trim these a little. I want them a little shorter. I do have a material clip that I could use, but I can do this without it. And I'm just going to get that spun into the loop. Now, I know obviously I'm using a non-buoyant material here, but to be honest with you, I'm really not using a lot of them. So it really shouldn't affect anything at all. So I'm going to get those wrapped right in there. And then I'm going to finish my dubbing right over the top of those. Got to wrap there. And then I want to start working my way back. I'm going to fold those forward so I don't collapse them all. Get that back there. There we go. All right, so now I'm going to get that dubbing loop locked in. That should be good. I'm going to cut that guy out of there. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start the process of finishing this thing up. But before I fold my foam back, I got to add a little bit of dubbing to my thread. Because this is where I'm going to cinch it down with a whip finish. And I want to make sure that when I whip finish it, that it's all sunken down in there and I'm not seeing any bare thread. Okay, what I'm also going to do is I'm also going to cut my front antenna before I do this to give my whip finisher a little bit of room. That looks okay. I just kind of eyeballed the cut there. So to fold this back, I'm going to use a bodkin here and I'm just going to kind of lay that on top here. And I'm going to put some pressure on it, fold it back. Hold it right there in position. Get that over the top. Get my whip finisher. Slip that in there. See, I'd be catching those legs if I didn't if I didn't cut them ahead of time. Tighten that down. And that's pretty much it with the exception of just some trimming here so i'm going to take this flash i'm going to pull it tight and i'm going to cut it about the same length as the foam then i'm going to take the top foam and cut that shorter than the wing and i'm going to take some take the corners off of that again in another epic attempt at something that fish don't care about then i'm going to take my back legs Put some pressure on those, try to even those up the best I can. Eyeball them, get them about there. I could probably trim up, I don't want to cut the leg, but I can trim up the side of this a little bit. I don't want any rogue anything there, so we'll fold that back. And that's kind of what I was looking for. I wanted a little bit more leggy action up in the thorax there but that's pretty much what i want so that is a large dry fly i mean i guess you can call it a golden stone call it whatever you want to call it but i mean maybe even a hopper who knows to be honest i don't know exactly what it represents but i'll tell you what i've, I've been using it for a long time caught big brookies on it big browns on the delaware you know sometimes when you throw something a little bit bigger uh, sometimes you can induce a rise, and trust me, if, if fish doesn't really want to move too much if they don't have to, but a fish will move for something like this. This is a hell of a dry fly. Use it all the time, and you can change up the colors too. You can switch up the colors to all kinds of different things uh, to mimic certain things, or you can just use some of the colors that you know work, like purple. You know, who the hell knows why purple works, but it does. Okay, appreciate you watching.